Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. Each week at this time, the Kraft Cheese Company presents for your enjoyment Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But right now, here's a message of very great importance for today's menu makers. I don't know how much you housewives actually know about modern margarine, but there's probably been no time in the history of America when it was so important for you to have the true facts about nourishing wholesome foods for your family. So I want to tell you about Parquet. Parquet is the new quality margarine made by Kraft, a delicious spread for bread, hot rolls, and toast. Now, of course, the fact that parquet does taste so good probably accounts for its popularity as a spread in millions of homes. But this is even more important. Parquet margarine is a protective food with exceptionally high nutritional value. It is one of the best energy foods you can serve and a reliable year-round source of vitamin A. There are 9,000 units of this vitamin in every pound of parquet. So tomorrow, ask your food dealer for a pound of parquet margarine made by Kraft. The whole family will like it because it tastes so good. And you'll know that you're giving them an economical, highly nutritious food made to the craft standards of quality. Just say Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now for the adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Where Pippa McGee and Molly live? Yes, madam. Oh, my. Do you think I'll be able to see them from the train window? No, lady. The McGee's are on their vacation. Oh. But say, there's a next-door neighbor of theirs, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Where? Where? That portly gent with the mustache on the platform, the one making a speech to his employees. How do you know they're his employees? Because every time he goes away, he gives them an hour off to come down to the station and wave goodbye. Oh, so that's Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I never... I can't tell you how touched I am to see all the employees of the Gildersleeve Girdle Works down here at the station to bid me goodbye. <laughs> it's indeed... Uh, by the way, is there anyone left at the plant? Uh, well, uh, no. What if some orders come in? Who'll take the phone calls? Uh, Mert. Oh, Mert, eh? <laughs> yeah. As I was saying while I'm away, I expect every one of you to uphold Gildersleeve Girdles to the best of your ability. And don't forget our motto. If you want the best of corsets, of course it's Gildersleeve. <laughs> very good, T.P., very good. Thank you, thank you. You'll get a raise. <laughs> and though it's necessary for me to go away and attend to other enterprises, the one thing closest to my heart is the Gildersleeve girdle. How long will you be gone, T.P.? At least three days and maybe till the end of the week. Oh, <laughs> uh, before you go, T.P., the Gildersleeve Girdle Workers Guild wishes to present you with this handsome leather briefcase as... A uh, coconut of our esteem for you. Yeah. Me? I don't know what to say all except... All aboard? Yes, all aboard. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Out of my way, everybody. Where are my bags? On the train, T.P. Thanks. I forgot to buy a ticket. Where do I buy a ticket? On the train, T.P. Oh, yes. Let go of me, boys. Where are you pushing me? On the train, T.P. Yes. Goodbye, Goodbye, children. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, children. your ticket, Mr. Gildersleeve. Sorry I haven't any berths left. Uh, couldn't you squeeze me in somewhere? I'll try, though it'll probably be a tight squeeze. <laughs> uh, tight squeeze. <laughs> Side splitting, isn't it? Going to be in Summerfield long? Oh, no, just three or four days. I'm taking over the administration of my brother-in-law's estate. They're going to run it for my niece and nephew. Uh, but that's quite involved, and I'm hungry. Which way is the diner? Why, an old, experienced traveler like you should know where the diner is. Huh? Oh, of course. No matter where you are, the diner's always at the other end of the train. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Uh, 
Excuse me, madam. Uh, pretty crowded in this diner. By George, I'm so hungry I could eat the waiter. Yes, sir. Is it all right if I sit at this table? Yes, sir. Sit right down, sir. If this gentleman doesn't mind reading his paper on his own side. I said if this gentleman doesn't mind reading his paper on his own side. Excuse me, sir. Does you mind? Yes, I do. I'm particular whom I eat with. <laughs> you are, eh? Well, I'm not. I'm hungry. Waiter, bring me a steak. A nice, juicy, double tenderloin rare. Waiter, where's my milk toast? I ordered it 15 minutes ago. Yeah. I'm sorry, but milk toast takes time, you know. And, waiter, I want a big, heaping plate of French fries. Yeah, French fries. And a cup of strong coffee with lots of cream. Yeah, I'll get it right away. And bring me my milk toast made with gluten bread, remember? Yes. Bread. Oh, that reminds me. Some hot biscuits and a little pot of jam. Gluten bread toasted and a cup of hot water. Uh, and an apple pie a la mode with cheese. Yeah, with cheese. Yeah. I can't stand this. Listening to you is giving me heartburn. <laughs> yeah. It is, huh? Hey, waiter, uh, don't forget the steak sauce, ketchup, piccalilli, and relish. Bring me a glass of bicarbonate of soda quick. <laughs> yes, sir. Right away, sir. I'll be back. Of course, it's none of my business, mister. And don't stick your nose in it. You... Well, all right. That's the way you feel about it. I was just going to tell you you're getting your newspaper in the mustard. I don't use mustard. No, I guess you don't need any. But what I was going to say was... Never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay, I won't say it then. That mustard from your newspaper is all over your sleeve now. I don't care. What? Of all the messes I... Uh, 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 water only spreads it. <laughs> you see what they tell you? I'll thank you to mind your own business. What's the big idea of jumping down my throat? What do you expect addressing a perfect stranger? You're far from perfect, stranger. <laughs> and from now on, I'm going to make a career out of ignoring you. Uh, here comes my food. That's pretty snappy service, waiter. Uh, yes, sir. Well, where's my milk toast? Yeah, I'm sorry, sir, but the chef, he's all out of glutton bread. <laughs> He wants to know would pumpernickel do just as well. No, pumpernickel wouldn't do just as well. And why keep me waiting all the time while you serve this big buffalo the minute he sits down? Oh, no, look here, mister. I don't want to look here. I'm sick of the sight of you. The idea. An overstuffed ox like you, gobbling and gobbling and gorging yourself like an ostrich. Oh. I've got a bad case of indigestion already just from looking at you. Why, you dyspeptic little dodo. Just because you're mean to your stomach and your stomach talks back to you, you bellyache. Excuse the expression. <laughs> you're not suffering from indigestion. You're just green with Epicurean envy. I won't sit here. And here's your bicarbonate of soda, mister. Take it away. Take it away. I need something stronger than that now. I've got some pills down here in my briefcase. Just a minute there. What are you doing with my briefcase? Your briefcase? This is mine. It is not. My employees gave it to me just this afternoon. Take your fat paws off of my briefcase before I... Before you watch, you dried up little crab apple. <laughs> and, uh, now, wait a minute, gentlemen, please. Let go of my briefcase. I will not. It's mine. Why, the idea is... Oh, yes, ma'am. Waiter. Waiter. Did you see anything of my briefcase? I left it... Oh, you gentlemen have it. Thank you so much. Well... <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I've located a bird for you at last. Oh, that's fine, Conductor. I was getting tired of sitting around here in my pajamas. Where is it? It's uh, upper nine in the next car. Upper nine? Oh, my goodness. The last time I was in an upper berth was, uh, let me see, uh, 50 pounds ago. <laughs> the porter's making it up for you now. Yeah, thanks. I do hope that porter gives me a wide berth. Uh, 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 it's a dark in here. Oh, uh, Porter! Uh, Porter! Quiet! Yes. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Must be sleeping. Oh, Porter! Yeah, sir. Have you got up or nine ready yet? Yes, but I didn't anticipate no gentlemen to such ample proportions. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I'd better take a ladder. Yes, I'd better take two. They're small. <laughs> well, all right, come on. Yeah, hey, here we are, right up there, sir. Up there? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Hold these ladders steady, Porter. 
Remember, if they tip, I won't. Yeah, sir. Now be careful, mister. Train's coming to a sharp quay pretty soon. When? Then. Oh! Hold on, Mr. Lattice Knight. I can't hold on. I'm coming down. Look out below. Oh! No! What hit me? Oh, my sacrilege. <laughs> Yeah, mister, let me help you out. I don't want to get up. I want to sleep. Not you, mister. The man in Dapa. He's now in the lower. And where am I? You're right here, brother. Get off of my poor stomach. Who is it? Huh? Oh, it's you. What are you doing sneaking into my berth? I'm not sneaking into your... <laughs> I'm not sneaking. I'm trying to climb into bed. I'm your upstairs neighbor. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I hope that swinging shelf snaps shut on you. Oh, yeah? If it's going to swing, I'll see if it swings your way. And if I land on you again, brother, you'll spend the rest of the night sleeping in the road bed. Oh, quiet. Let me go to sleep. Okay, Grandpa. Unpleasant dreams. All right, Porter. Give me a leg up again, will you? Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-three. Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-four. Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-five. Oh, my goodness. Two o'clock already and still not a wink. Yes, thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-six. Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-eight. Oh, what's the use? There's only some way of stopping that buzzsaw down there. I can't stand this any longer. Where's that porter? I'll fix this guy. Did you call me, sir? Uh, yes. Would you mind getting me a drink of ice water? I can't sleep. Uh, yeah, sir. Yeah. Here's the water, mister. Uh, thank you. You needn't wait. <laughs> good night, good night, good night. Uh, good night, sir. Yes. Now, if I can hold this cup in this hand and open the lower curtain with it. Ah, I've got it. Yeah. Steady now, Gildersleeve. Ready. Aim. <laughs> oh, no. What, what was that? Porter! Porter! <laughs> Shut this window, will you? It's raining right in on my face. Quiet! Can a man get any rest around here? <laughs> Good morning, sir. He's just pulling into Summerfield. You want me to brush y'all? No, I'll walk down the steps like the rest of the passengers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, Porter, you've given me such good service. Here's an order for a gilded sleeve girdle for your wife. Uh, thank you, sir. I happen to be a spinster at the moment. <laughs> but if it's all right with you, I'll put it in my hope chest. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's perfectly all right. Uh, Summerfield, eh? By George, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing Marjorie and little Leroy again. Well, why can't I, Marjorie? How why can't I call them T.P. like they do down at this foundry? It isn't a foundry, Leroy. It's a... Oh, never mind. It's nothing that concerns little boys. And I'm sure that he will prefer to have you call him Uncle Throckmorton. Oh, shucks. You can't go around calling a big, tough guy who runs a steel foundry Throckmorton. It's positively derogatory. It's derogatory. Yes, that's too. <laughs> Leroy, 
Who told you Uncle Throckmorton was in the steel business? Nah, you thought you were so smart. I saw one of his letterheads. The Gildersleeve Girder Company. Hmm? <laughs> oh. Oh, yes. Gildersleeve Girder Company. Gee, he should be here by now, shouldn't he, Marjorie? Now, don't you worry, Roy. Just as soon as his train arrives, Mr. Wills will bring him here for breakfast. Oh, I want to go down to the station, too. I know, but Ted has to discuss all the legal details with Uncle Throckmorton before we go to court. Say, you're getting pretty darn stuck on that Ted guy, aren't you? Why, Leroy Forrester, I am not. Ted Wills is really our lawyer. He is not. Williams and Williams, Willies and Wills are our lawyers, and Ted's nothing but the tail end. <laughs> Well, he's young yet. You just give him time. Oh, there you go. Who oh, oh, say, how's if I should call him Uncle Morton? Call who? Oh, Uncle Throckmorton. Well, I don't think he'd object to that. Wait, I can do better than that. How's this? Uncle Mort. Who's that? Uncle Mort. I'll answer it. Well, 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 I'll bet this is little Leroy. Hi, Uncle Mort. Hi, who? You, Uncle Mort. You don't mind if I call you Uncle Mort, do you, Uncle Mort? <laughs> no, not at all. Go right ahead. Uncle Mort, eh? <laughs> I like that. And this is Marjorie, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Marjorie, eh? Uh, come here, my dear. <laughs> my, how are you grown? <laughs> Uncle Throckmorton, let me take your hat and coat. Will you have some breakfast? Uh, no, thanks. I've already had mine on the... Well, I'll have a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> sit right here, Uncle. Ted, you sit over there. Oh, thanks. My, this looks wonderful. Hey, Uncle, will you take me back to Wistful Vista, will you, and let me work in your factory? Uh, what? Well, I didn't think you'd be interested in that sort of thing. Now, Leroy... Gee, I am, Uncle Mort. That must be some way out. I bet you make the supports for a lot of big projects there. <laughs> We don't turn out anything much like you. Uh, we sort of confine ourselves to uh, foundations. Uh, oh. yeah. Say, I'd like to go along sometime when you install some of those foundations. I don't have the... <laughs> what, what did you say, young man? Oh. Uh, please excuse me, Roy Uncle Mort. He's been like that ever since he found out that you own the Gildersleeve Girder Company. What? Uh, the Gildersleeve Girder? Yes. Oh, oh, yes, I see it all now. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a bright boy. Gee, Uncle, Uncle, you ever have to slug it out with any of them tough steel workers of yours? Uh, no, no, I never do. You know, huh? Uh, oh, well, uh, of course, uh, there have been times when I've had to put uh, more snap into their work. <laughs> Yeah. Once I was so angry, I picked up a badly made uh, foundation and bounced it right off the foreman's head. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Oh. Now, Leroy, let uh, your uncle eat his breakfast. Yeah. Have some toast, Uncle Mort? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, uh, speaking of toast reminds me of an amusing incident on the train last night. Uh, you'll enjoy this, Leroy. When I went into the diner, the only empty chair was at a table with a sound. Yeah, when the ice water hit him in the face. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's time we leave for court, Mr. Gildersleeve. It is? Uh, come on, kids. This won't take long. Well, all I can say is we run things better than this in Whitfield Vista. Eleven o'clock and the judge hasn't even shown up yet. Judge Hooker's usually very prompt. Yes, the trouble with some of these judges is they think they're little tin gods. Take those black robes away from them, and what have they got? Bow legs. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, that's a hot one, Uncle Moore. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Everyone rise, please. Ah, last. Superior Court, Department 25, the Honorable Hitter, Hitch, the judge deciding is now in session. Be seated. Sit down, Uncle Moore. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Who's that man sitting in the judge's chair? Well, that's Judge Hooker. Judge Hooker? That's the man in the lower berth. Hey, Mr. Rockmore, Pete Gildersleeve for appointment as Administrator of the State of Ray Forrester. Oh, that's us. Come on, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm not feeling very well, Ted. <laughs> uh, couldn't we postpone this over to another judge? Oh, come on, Uncle Mort. Remember what you said. This guy will be a 
pushover. Yes, a pushover. Now, come on, come on. Step up. Don't go. I haven't got all day. Make a snappy post. The judge is pretty short-tempered this morning. He didn't get any sleep last night. Oh, my. <laughs> Uh, Your Honor, with your permission, I'll put Mr. Gildersleeve on the stand first. Go ahead, Mr. Wills. Where in the witness belt? You thought I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, you? I do. (laughs) Well, do you or don't you speak up? I do. That voice is very familiar. (laughs) Turn around, Mr. Oh, so it's you. Yes. Uh, Hello, Judge. (laughs) Mr. Wills. Yes, Your Honor. I will examine this man's qualifications if you don't mind. I don't, Your Honor. But I do. Silence. (laughs) Now then, Gildersleeve, what do you do for a living? I make girdles, Your Honor. (laughs) Order in the court. Order in the court. Order in the court. Order. Order. And you, Gildersleeve, any more cheap humor and I'll judge you in contempt. But it's true, Your Honor. I'm the president of the Gildersleeve Girdle Company. Oh, come on. Tell him the truth. He doesn't make girdles, Judge. Yeah. And what does he do? Steel foundation. I bet he would, too. <laughs> now, no more interruptions, my boy. Remember, this is a courtroom. You realize who I am, of course. Sure, and you're a bald like a little tin god. Yeah. Why? Holy Roy! But, but you just said so yourself, Uncle Morris. Oh, you did. Uh, just a little joke, Your Honor. You know how I kid. Uh, I know. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you a plain question, and I want a plain answer. Yeah. What business are you in? Well, I... Uh, oh, uh, that is... Uh, Leroy, would you mind going out into the hall and get me some uh, some ice water? One moment. Who's running this court? You or I? Better not get Uncle Mort mad, Judge. Last night he threw a whole bucket of water on a guy in the bus under him. Oh, my. Here we go again. <laughs> he did, did he? Yeah. And this poor sap woke up and thought it was raining. Oh. <laughs> you ought to hear Uncle Mort tell him. <laughs> Thanks, I will. Let's hear all about it, Uncle Mort. But, Judge Hooker, it's after five o'clock. This poor man's been on the witness stand all day. All right, all right. One more question, then I'll hand down my decision. Mr. Gildersleeve, what makes you think that you have executive ability? Well, I have a large staff of my own. And through years of experience, I know the proper relationship between employer and employee. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wells? Our firm has thoroughly investigated Mr. Gildersleeve, and we're satisfied as to his qualifications. Uh Mr. Wells, I have great respect for you and your associates. That is probably the only reason why I'm going to grant your petition. However... In order to protect these children from their own misguided enthusiasm, I'm going to require this gilda sleeve to report to me every single week. Uh, But, Your Honor... get an okay for every cent that he spends... But, Judge... And I will require him to post a bond of $50,000 in cash. Now, see here, Hooker. (laughs) I won't stand for this. I'll resign. Quiet. Gilda sleeve, I never sent for you. You came here begging for this job. To quote from Brawby versus Union Buggy Corporation, Civil Code of Nebraska, you made your bed and you can't lie out of it. But my business in Wistful Vista... You remain here and make this estate pay or go to jail for contempt. Now, wait a minute. I'm not good. Court is adjourned. I'll kill that old goat. (laughs) Ted, we've got to do something about this. Do you realize that a $50,000 bond would not only take every cent of my ready cash, but also means a mortgage on my Gordel Works? Uh, Gee, I'm sorry about how the whole thing went, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, maybe if we went into the judge's chambers, we could persuade him to lower the bond, Uncle Mark. Sure, just let me talk to him. Young man, you've talked enough for one day. How about it, Ted? Well, it won't hurt to try. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Uh, Excuse us, Judge Hooker. Uh, you remember me, don't you? <laughs> I uh, I thought perhaps maybe we could possibly get that little cash bond reduced. I don't see why I should. Have if a... you spoke to somebody who'd known me for a long time, they might convince you that I'm not such a bad fellow. <laughs> oh, that would be fine, Uncle Moore. Yeah. Who could the judge talk to? Why, uh, the president of the Whistle Vista Chamber of Commerce. He's my next door neighbor too. A chap named Fibber McGee. We can call him long distance, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. 
Yes. Yes, I see, Mr. McGee. Yes, I'm glad you put me straight on that. Yes. I knew my little chum would set me in right. That's a very good point. Leroy, I want you to meet McGee one of these days. There's one of nature's noblemen. I guess you've made up my mind for me, Fibber. Yeah, Fibber. <laughs> Hold the phone a second, and I'll tell him. Gildersleeve. Uh, yes, Judge? Gildersleeve, I've decided to rescind that $50,000 bond. Uh, uh, I knew that would happen if you spoke to my little pal. Yes, after talking to McGee, I'm going to make that bond $100,000. What? Give me that telephone. Hello? You're a hard man, McGee. The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. While Uncle Trock recovers from that one, I want to say a word that I believe will make every thinking housewife want to try parquet margarine tomorrow. This delicious new craft product is most popular as a spread for bread and a seasoning for hot cooked foods because of its delicate, pleasing flavor. But the same qualities that make it so good for table use make it an extra fine shortening for baking. I say extra fine because it has all the qualities of an ordinary shortening plus fine flavor and added nourishment. Let me read you a statement from Mrs. Lillian Watts, who, having been born and raised on a farm, is mighty particular about food. She says, quote, I have a family of eight, and they all like parquet margarine. I use it in various ways. Cakes, bread, muffins, biscuits, soup, spreads, and other ways too numerous to mention. Thank you a thousand times for this wonderful product. End of quote. Now, that's a mighty enthusiastic statement. But you'll be just as enthusiastic once you have tried parquet. It's so delicious, so nourishing, so grand in every way. Tomorrow, be sure to order Parquet, the economical spread made by Kraft. And remember, every pound of Parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. George Leroy, I'm going to show that judge I can run that estate, or my name won't be Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. You better warn Uncle Mort. You won't even have a name. Yeah. No. I'll just have a number. Good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Original music on tonight's program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon saying good night for Kraft and reminding you to tune in again next week at the same time to hear the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company.